Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Sam. I grew up in the FLDS community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs, which I moved out of when I was 18 years old. My name is Melissa and I was raised LDS. Sam and I have been married for almost eight years now and have two beautiful babies. And we have today with us a very special guest. It's actually Sam's cousin. Yes. Joanna. We have Joanna with us today. We're very excited. She has a very interesting story to tell. So thank you for being here. Yes, awesome. and we can't wait to have you all hear her full story, which will be in the upcoming weeks. But we kind of wanted to give an introduction to a pretty big piece of her story today, which is all about the United Order. Yep. And um, we'll let her kind of introduce us into that. But first, we want to say that if you want to hear more about Sam growing up in polygamy or Joanna growing up in polygamy and some more special guests, then please like and subscribe. And this weekend, we're actually going to have our first um, live for members only so if you that's something that you're interested in then please hit the join button below and we'd love to chat live um, once a month and be able to answer your questions there yes so. and thank you all for, for your support we really do appreciate that and just FYI as well I want to uh, let everyone know that we will put in the description a link to Joanna's information as well she has an Instagram account and also just started working as a real estate ag agent yeah so. here in the Las Vegas area so if anybody's looking to buy or sell a home here in Las Vegas area then DM her on Instagram and like I said we'll leave her information below yep. so let's get started then Yeah. <laughs> Was that a long enough intro for you? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, so again, today we're going to kind of focus on your um, time with the United Order. Yes. So for those people who have never even heard of that, how old were you and how were you, was it introduced to you as what the United Order was? So we heard a little bit about the United Order. It was kind of people that are worthy will continue to go to church, continue to go on, you know, what they call it, like the resurrection or the lifting up, I guess, Zion. Um, I was 11 when it happened, and mm -hmm. it was kind of like, like we had our brothers, our caretaker. I don't know if you've heard about caretakers. No. I have heard of them, yes. When, when you're, explain. basically your father gets kicked out, they place like a priest head over you to guide you and counsel you through life. Yep. But our older brother was, he came in and he said, we all need to be at the meeting house, like in 10 minutes. So we packed up, we went over, uh, we went like through an interview with Lyle Jeffs. He just asked one single question. It was like, are you clean and pure? I mean, I was 11, so. <laughs> so when he was saying clean and pure, what was popping through your head as an 11-year-old? Like, what did you um, expect that to mean when someone says, are you clean and pure? For me, I kind of went through this panic mode where I was like, do I lie? Do I steal things? You know, am I dishonest? Do I beat around the bush? Like, those were the things that went through my mind as an 11-year-old. Okay, mm -hmm. but, feeling. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I just wasn't sure. Like, depending on age, I can see that meaning a lot of different things to people yeah, at different ages, right? Sure. What would be but it was also something that was taught a lot, right? Yes. In the in that community growing up, it was like, hey, you got to be clean and pure, especially to the women. Yeah. So it wasn't a new term for you. Like I imagine you've heard that uh, before growing up. But, oh yeah. But but it's hard to understand as an eleven year old what all that entails. Yeah, so. and you're standing there, you're holding Lyle's hand. He's supposed to be giving revel. He's supposed to be, <laughs> you know, given inspiration about you. He's supposed to fill your spirit. And so I was, I was really nervous, and I was like, uh, yeah, I guess. And he was like. You guess? I was like, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> why, why not? I'm 11, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at that point, Lyle Jeffs, and that's Warren's brother, correct? Yes. Okay, what position did he hold? Was Warren in prison already? Yes, he, he's been in prison since I was, I think, six. Okay, okay. so he'd been in prison a for a time. while, yeah. and Lyle was his brother. And then what role was Lyle playing at that time? He was the bishop. Okay. So he was the head honcho while the prophet was in jail. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, and he, uh, so in this interview, so called interview, shaking his hand to find out if you're cleaning pure, all of that, was this something that uh, was like, this was the only, I guess, door into the United Order was to talk to him first? Yeah. And, okay. So, yeah, as far as I know, like, that was the only way in. And, like, he chose randomly when interview, like, when you got interviewed, who got in. So, Guess tried, he tried to catch someone off guard then, huh? Yeah, based on his inspiration. <laughs> Interesting. Now, out of your family, were there people who didn't get into yeah. the United Order? Wow. But it's very interesting. So everybody, most of the family went that night, and we had, like, you know, a couple of children with special needs, so a couple of people stayed behind to attend. They went in the next morning, but all the people that went in the next morning for interviews did not get in. 
Like, not oh. one of them was, was my little brother who was like eight. He was so. only eight years old. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Interesting. <laughs> and so, were they all still with Lyle though, even though it was on different days? Yeah. Okay. So I was Lyle like, had a bad breakfast that morning and said, you know what? No one's coming in today. He's like, these guys wow. aren't on the shirts anymore. <laughs> so what would happen within a family Crazy. or what happened within your family when certain members were allowed into the United Order and some of them were not? So the ones that were allowed in went to church. There was, however, a non-member church. I don't really know what that was about because I never went there. But uh, we went to church, the ones that were members went to church, the other ones went to the other church or stayed home, and they wanted there to be like a separation. And eventually they did. They separated all the non-members from member households. So they had to leave the homes completely? Yes. Like even eight-year-olds? Yes. So was your mother part of it? Was she worthy yes. to be able to stay? So her children were just like sent away from her? Yeah, they were sent to a different uh, home, her nine-year-old. And I, so correct, I don't know if you had saw this at all, but I heard of and saw with my own eyes some homes that were actually, they built up walls in the middle of the home because they, they didn't have anywhere to send some of the family that wasn't allowed into the uh, the United Order. order. Yes. United Order. So they would build a wall in the middle of the house and say, okay, this family cannot associate with this half of the family, and, and they would separate them that way. Did yeah. you see or hear of that? So I've heard of that, and with our family, they moved them to like one side of the house, separate bedrooms, and like okay. less communication. Be They said, be kind, be, be respectful, but don't invite communication. Interesting. So it was very, it was very weird. Big division for sure. So, so once you found out that you were, how, so you go and you have the interview with Lyle, and he looks into your soul and he receives his revelation. <laughs> and from there, when did you, how long did it take till you heard that you had been allowed into? So it was the, the next morning. Okay. So your other family members are going and you already have your answer that you're part of it. Yes. But it okay. was pack, pack a pair of clothes. You're going up to the font to get baptized into the United Order. Okay. So they did baptism again. Yes. Okay. And what, so... Um, for those of you, better. Yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar, the FLDS, they baptize to become a member of the church when they're eight years old. Very similar to the LDS, we were also baptized at the age of eight. So um, why did they say you needed to be re-baptized in order to be in this special group? Did I don't know. It was, it was kind of like an, just an entry, I guess. Everybody had to be baptized. They said... Every time you get baptized, you're given a clean sheet, you're clean and pure, whatever. But mm. I guess he just answered that you were. I mean, I guess some people lie. But they still want them in, right? So you're clean <laughs> and pure. We receive revelation that you're clean and pure. And so now you need to be baptized so you can become clean and pure. I guess. <laughs> Makes sense if you don't think about it too much, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so I imagine it was to make the person feel like, okay, you have truly been accepted into this united order. Because you were baptized into it, so it's almost it almost seems like it was a another church within the church. Yeah, it kind of was. Okay. Wow. Like I said, they moved them all, and then there was the big proper separation thing where they moved all, you know, the girls and boys can communicate mm -hmm. at all, even in family members like brothers and sisters. So. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that's wondering why I'm seeming so surprised about this, even though I grew up in the same place Joanna did here, is because I had moved out before this United Order thing was even a thing. They started this whole United Order after I had moved out. So this is all news to me. Or not news, I've heard about it, but it's interesting and more information about it that I didn't know. Yeah, and did they just say that it was revelation given by Warren Jeffs? Or like who came up with the It the was. Idea? It was given from Warren Jeffs and it was the worthy is what they called it. The ones okay. that were considered worthy. And they go to church. Um, Warren would call in for hours. Church would go till, you know, 8 o'clock sometimes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. And he would call in from jail and talk, like, himself. Oh, really? Yes. He so, was allowed to do that? Yes. Whoa, I did not know that. I mean, we paid for phone cards, of course, <laughs> with yeah. tithing money. Oh. Do you, and do you think the authorities in the prison knew that he was calling? I mean, I believe so. How like how would he get away with know. that? But I mean, did they know that he was calling his followers? Oh, I, I don't I'm, know. Well, I'm sure if they, I mean, there's not really a lot of privacy in jail, so I'm sure they could overhear his phone calls. Right. And I'm just what was surprised going on. they allowed him to do that. I'm surprised that they allowed him. And for such long periods, you're saying they were yeah, like pretty long sermons? Yeah, it was a sermons. long time. And like, it would come like at mm -hmm. different times. Someone would be up in the middle speaking. They'd be like, someone would walk up the mic, they'd go and they'd be like, Warren Jeffs is called, or the real prophet of God is called in, so. Oh, gosh. I'm wow. going to cut that short. We're going to, you know, listen to him. We just sat there and listened. And it was kind of weird. A lot of the newer revelations, I feel like they were a lot, you know, like the Bible or the Book of Mormon has, like, really stern uh, language sometimes where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, 
double-edged sword. You people do this, the people do that. And I feel like it was a lot more of that. Like I'm calling out to the, you know, the congregation of worthy or da da da. And it was kind of, kind really of divisive. Strict. Yeah, so for sure. So he would call people by name and. So he did. He would call people by name and kick them out. Wow. Like people that were sent to go forever. He would call them by name, like in church. And these were people within the United Order. Some of them were. And they were sent to go for some were, you know, accused so of murder. Even of some of those people were kicked out. Yes. Accused of murder wow. of the unborn. What did that mean? Abortion. Okay. But it also considered like protected sex was considered murder of unborn. Protected sex is considered So any kind of prevent of, yeah. like birth is considered. Birth control at all? Yes. It's right down to Well, I mean I know okay. we're gonna we're gonna get to Joanna's story later in another video where we can get into more details. Yeah, about a lot more details of what stuff. the women were told how that felt that. And especially after moving out, you know, all the learning curve that, that must have been. So Oh yeah. Yeah. But so so you got baptized and so they called your family up, you got baptized, and you go back and the house is all separated. What were some of the like rules that changed with you being part of this new group? You said it's like different church, right? Was there anything else like special or different that you had to do? So we had to wear our hair all up on our head. None of it could it couldn't come like down to your collar at all. Okay. Uh, there was a lot of food restrictions. I don't remember all of them. Chocolate, coffee, beets, corn, radishes, onions. No onions? Food restrictions? No onions. Or beets. And beets are good for kidneys, you know. No yeah. So yes, onions. he would. And it was the same thing. It was just a revelation from God. All the kids were like, yay, no onions. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those kids that would, you know, put mayo on bread and onions. So. Oh, you liked onions? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. man. Did they tell you, did they give you any kind of reasoning as these things would come or just it's Not really. It was just direction from God for your health benefits or something. Like, it was wow. kind of... And then, like, you would raise your right hand and swear that you would, you know, uphold. You make a covenant with God that you will uphold and do all of these things. And it was different things, like, you know, some of it was no associating with outsiders, no associating with non-members. And you just raise your right hand to the square and be like, I know, swear I, to do this. Yes. Yeah. So when they said non-members, were they talking about, like, the apostates or any, like, um... And the Gentiles, or are they talking also about the members that hadn't become part of the United Order? Oh. Do they mean all of them? Yes. Oh yeah, my goodness. Because at this point, if you're not a part of the United Order, you're not really... You don't go to church, but you can earn to go to church. You can, like, you can become better and get that interview again. And you, you do have the privilege of earning to become... Uh, oh, did you order. have to ask for the interview? No. Or was it something that, oh, they just could so feel just when you were trying? crossing your fingers yeah. for that magic handshake again. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. See, that's I never went through that. I do remember going to meetings and that where the leaders would stand up on in the in front of the congregation and we would all go up and shake their hands. And yeah, there we were did times, that as well. yeah, and there were times where I felt like they were looking through my soul because we were taught that they could, you know. Yeah. So we were like, oh no, he's seeing everything wicked that I've ever done. Yeah. I stole candy yesterday. Can he see it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet. That, that was my child mind. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, I know you had mentioned before to us that, like, there was also the law of consecration. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so that's you take all of your belongings and you have to pack them up. You write down, except for, like, your big furniture for some reason. I mean, that was kind of a hassle. But if you could, they wanted you to. But you would, like... Like, everything in your house. Yes. And you had to do, like, I think you had to consecrate, like, once. And then you had to document everything you got once a month. They had sheets and papers that you filled out. And then you also had to consecrate your time. Okay. So okay. there was sheets where you wrote how many hours you spent blessing others. You mm -hmm. had to write a description. You had to do the date, how many hours it was. And if you, if it was, you know, I spent, because, you know, I think there's 17 hours of daylight time. Yeah. So if you got, like, less than 17, then you had to write why. Interesting. Wow. And then they would collect the papers. And there was, you know, the file ID number. Every time you walked into church, you'd walk up and he'd have his computer and be like, file ID. And you'd, like... You know, so, tell him. And so you'd have to you'd get your number. It's like a secret yes. number. It was you, just a four-digit number. Four-digit number you'd have to memorize, and it was your code to get in. Yes. The secret code. So that tells you how many people, because there couldn't have been more than 9,999 people, right, that would have been selected for that. You say 9,000? I mean, there's yeah, people in Canada, the highest four-digit number. North Dakota. Well, at that point, the, if there so, were so many left out, they're, they're, I don't think they're, they could have ever close to that. reached anywhere close to that number. Yeah. So, as far as I know, they were only four digits, but... Okay. Okay, so you had to go to the straws. So did you have to go, if you've already consecrated everything, meaning that you're giving everything to the church, then did you have to ask them to, like, get your stuff back? Or did so, you... in my experience, no. You would leave it in there. You'd pray about it. You'd fill the spirit, walk around the storehouse. 
kind of weird. Give your papers in. So they have a list of everything that you own, right down to like your toothbrush, right down to, no you know, way. like disposable things. And then every time you got something new, and we get things from the storehouse, you know, because the storehouse supplies. So you get those. They have a record of that. You would have to mark that on your chart every month. So you had to go through everything every month and like update it. Wow. Keep a tally of everything that you owned. Yes. So is it basically just, I mean, obviously it's another form of control, right? So you never really felt like you owned anything? Yeah, kind of. Like, I didn't really feel like it was my I stuff. Was, I was going to say, what's the point? But yes, if, if that's what they wanted, you don't own anything. It's all ours. Or what they would say, it's all the Lord's. Yeah. Right? They would say, it's all God's stuff. It doesn't belong to you. So was there ever anything that you didn't put on the list? Not that I can remember. I quit keeping track after okay. like the But you were third, you were a good little girl, making sure you had everything. I was at first. <laughs> okay. But wow. by like there was a couple of revelations I actually there was one. They were like by the little you know, by going on with time, they were like, You can raise your right hand and swear that you will, you know, make a covenant with God, that you will uphold all of these rules, all of these things. Or you can get up and leave church and not come back. Like oh, become wow. a non member. Okay. And I actually did at one point. There was one where I was like, I don't I don't wanna do that. So I just got up and walked out and my mom was like, What did you do? Because we we lived kinda of close to church. Okay. Yeah. Everyone so. was probably looking at you though, like, uh oh. Oh yeah, everybody that walked out, it was like so and so walked out. Oh boy. And then the like, rumors yeah. start. Yes. The rumors yeah. start. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? Like what the revelation was that you didn't want to agree to, or were you just I kinda think, done with all of it? Honestly, overall? I think it was a food one. I think it was like something I really liked and my eleven year old mind was like I want to continue to eat that. Those onions. You had to have your <laughs> onions. <laughs> It'd be my chocolate onions. for me. I would so not I, be willing to give up chocolate. It might have been yeah. that one. I can't remember. Because there were so many of them. But I do know it was a food one. Wow. Okay. And I was like, I just I just want to continue to eat that. And mom was like, you know, you can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, just I want to eat that. So I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so did they let you back in and realize, oh, no, she was just being no. 11? No. So that was, you were never, so you there was never, no forgiveness. I never went back. I never, never tried to back. get back in. Wow. Like, and okay. I was, so that I was, was your good. final straw. You're like, nope, yeah. I got to have my chocolate. I'm out. <laughs> and I was sick of it anyway. I was kind of sick of church. No, I'm sure there was a whole <laughs> a whole lot more to it, right? But yeah. but I couldn't go to the non-member church either because you were considered a walkout. So you were so different than the the members, but you were not a non-member. Wow. Okay, so you're like in this weird limbo. Yeah. Waiting for the magic call that you could come and be re-interviewed. Yes. So, so did the non-members also have numbers then that they had to give? or I it, believe they did. I'm not sure. Okay. I believe they did. Because I was going to say you could just walk in and see. But if they had numbers as well, maybe they did. Um, I, I've mentioned this a couple times on my uh, in other videos, but people started putting the word Zion on top of their doors. Oh, yeah. That was kind of a required thing. Is that for order members only? Or is that... Not for, really. I think most people just did it and then they stayed there when you moved because they moved people whenever... They okay. want to. Like, okay. they split up our family, like, three times. Moved them to different homes, you know. Moved us in with different families. We didn't really know. Okay. It just kind of happened like yeah, that. I just wasn't sure if that was... Everyone was supposed to do that or if it was just the order members. I think it was just an overall thing that Everyone's, everybody... Okay. So, at 11, you walked out of the church and put yourself into the limbo of not member, not non-member. Um... Were you still allowed to live with the members, or did you get I separated did. into the other homes? I did. I lived with the members still. Oh, okay. So it was. Kind so you of weren't completely shunned in that in the same way that the non-members were, but you weren't completely accepted like they were either. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you did that at all? You said eleven. So at what point? At what age did you start having doubts that any of it was? what they claimed it to be. I mean, about the church overall, about the United Order? Mm, let's go to the United Order first, and then we'll get to the yeah. <laughs> church. Probably when, about the time I walked out. So okay. it was a couple months for me. And you were like, this I is I was kind of like, this is, this is just interesting. I'm just mm -hmm. not feeling it. And it wasn't like a serious thing for me. It was just, I was sick of church. I was sick of the rules. And I was just like, whatever. Yeah, well, 11 is really young to try to do all of that. Yeah. yeah. And about how old were you when you decided or started realizing the church might not be what you thought it was? I was seven, six, seven. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you knew for a long time. Yeah. I was just kind of going. So I wanted to get out. I just thought it was a pipe dream. I never really saw it happening. You never thought you could get out? Yeah. But now I was like, this is weird. Women are submissive, you know, and Warren says they should be polished like a diamond for the men that they want. They're, the men should polish them. And I was like, no, no, it's not going to work for me. Yeah. So I just... And this was at age seven? Man, when I remember when I was age seven, I thought I was, I thought I was, you know, 
I don't know. I thought it was be the worthy best, for at least the best ten little boy in the world, and I was gonna do exactly what I was supposed to do. So that's pretty brave of you. At I didn't. Such a young I spoke age. to mom about it a little, but not much. Like I was like, "This is weird. I don't want yeah, this. I don't want your life." That, that's why I told her because my dad was kicked out when I was three, and my mm. mom wasn't happy. So I was like, "I don't want your life." Like, this isn't for me, really. So. And you, so you saw some things within your own mother and within the family that you knew right away you didn't want yes so that's kind of why you started thinking this isn't what i need or what i want in my life okay that makes sense when you left you how old were you when you completely left the community 17 17 okay and when you left um was the united order still a thing like was it still active and running and so there's full restore oh but wait, there's more. There's more <laughs> for full restoral. Okay, yes. so okay. all the members become non-members. They move back to their families, and then there's full restoral. And this is like very elite, like you know, the best, the best. These people have been keeping their records. They've been keeping their time. They've been consecrating everything. And I was never full restoral, but I did live with one, and she would just go off. Like on Sunday, she'd go to church. She would go off like just randomly throughout the day and be like, "I've got something I gotta go do." So you never knew, and it was like really secretive. It was really like, it was really suspicious. Like it felt so so weird. Wow. Were they baptized again? Yes. Okay, so if someone had become full restoral, then they had been baptized. Remember when they were eight, and then they would have been rebaptized. Before, uh, you remember the reconfirmations before the United Order. Oh, okay, oh so there's goodness. reconfirmations. Okay. So I'm missing one. Okay, no, so it's just everybody. I was just. So everyone so before everyone. the United Order, everyone was rebaptized. Now, were you out there when that happened? No, I was gone by that point. So you had only been baptized in FLDS once. Yeah, I guess once Ingram was boy. good enough for me. There you go. That would have been 2011, and then 2012 would have been the United okay. Order. Okay, so 2011. Yeah, I moved out in 2008, so yeah, I was long wow. gone by then. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? He's thinking how old he is. <laughs> so then, and then in 2012 is when they had the United Order, yes. and then they put everybody back into the member, or sorry, the non-member category, and then they had this. Yes, so about 2013, I'd say about the end, they had the full restoral. Okay. And just more secretive even than before. Very. About how many people do you think were a part of that? So way less, I know. And it was really where they, they would randomly pick, like there was like this whole family and they picked like a 14-year-old girl. She was the only one picked uh, out of the uh, entire family. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're all guessing what's going on here, huh? <laughs> It was kind of interesting. It felt like that it was people that... Oh, my goodness. I don't know. You know, like the young marriages kind of yeah. geared towards that. It was a lot of younger girls, a lot of... A few... I, there was fewer men because a lot of them were kicked out by then. Mm -hmm. But I know there was some that were... The, the worst of life, okay. Yes. Wow. So, the, these four full restorals, were they living among you or did they ever move in, move away to a different they city did, or something? They moved into separate houses eventually. Oh, okay, so they lived with you for the first little while, and then they moved away. Yes, it was kind of the same thing. Four restorals moved with four restorals, so. I can't imagine, because then at this point, they're splitting up families once again. They're combining everyone. Like, they're combining strangers, the full restoral people. Yeah. And then splitting up their families. I mean, it just seems so crazy. So within the full restoral, if they're putting people, and they're kind of like meshing them into these homes, did they ever like marry each other? Or do any marriages at that point? Only Warren can perform marriages, is what they say. So, no. So, there still were not any and marriages at that point. I heard that if you were worthy, you could be told who you were meant to marry. But you wouldn't marry them. But you would not marry them. What because, a tease! Because, because Warren, Warren couldn't perform these virtually, right? Yes. Okay, so he had to be only there in person. he has the right. And anybody in the whole world, only he had the right to perform marriages. Of course. So, can you so imagine no one's going to get married That person again. over there, that's going to be your spouse. But don't look at them, don't touch to don't touch them, don't talk to them. And don't have any, because if you covet them, even in your heart, that's committing adultery in your heart. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. So don't have any of that. <laughs> oh, wow. A couple things uh, in the, I know the full restoral, they couldn't say the word dog or pig. Did you say the word? Yes, they couldn't say it. So I knew for a time there that dogs were not allowed in the community. So is that why they weren't allowed to say the word? I don't know. That was never explained. Interesting. And but, pig? Yeah. Huh. Men could never see your feet bare. Oh, goodness. Or your hair hanging. Oh, my gosh. So someone just asked wow, us that question if feet were allowed, and I was like, 
feet are free. <laughs> in my time. But in my family in, when not, I was yeah, out there. Yeah, in his time, but not in the full restoral. Not in the full restoral. So, like, I came up in bare feet and my hair, the girl, I'm not going to say her name, but she was like, Joanna, <gasps> your hair and your feet. And I was like, what? <laughs> So what was the, the condition of your what was the condition of your hair? Was it was it done just not up in a bun or was it just it hanging? It was it was hanging. Okay. So she was upset about your hair and your feet. So okay. they couldn't see the length, I think it was. It was important. Because you know, the length is sacred. The thing is we wash our men's feet in the temple with oils mm. with our hair. That was like the big thing. Like mm. women's So I'm like, okay. So like it was sacred between you and your husband, but then I was like, okay, so if you're married, can he see your hair? Yeah. Or does it have to be braided? <laughs> Yeah, that's not. I was curious about that. That was going to be a question. I was going to say, like, so So is that something that's supposed to be like saved for your husband? That's what I believe. Like your husband are then allowed to see your feet and your, like, that's what I believe. Okay. But thank goodness you never stayed long enough out there to find out. Oh yeah, I was like, this is. (laughs) Have you heard these rules? Were you like grateful that you weren't chosen to be part of the full restoral? Oh yes, I remember a phrase I used is she'd be like, if you want to go to heaven, you can't do this, and I'm like, well, if you're going there, I'm going to hell. (laughs) <laughs> it was bad, but there. a lot of people would say like, that there because they got really like you know hoity toity were the ones whatever yeah mm-hmm. and they would tell us what we should be doing but there were certain things they couldn't tell us yeah so gotcha. I was going to say how did you find out about all these rules were they talking about them they would tell us some of them but okay. not all of them and then there was another thing so there was like this olive leaf wreath and four strolls had to hang out on their door. That was one that was required for restorals. Okay. You left it with the house when you went. I guess it just stayed there. Also, you had, uh, uh. there was like satchels for when we ran, like, ran up in the mountains when the destructions happened. Mm. Only four restorals got these like satchels for your stuff. Huh. Or something. It was very interesting. And they had specific satchels and specific things in those, I imagine. Yes. For the floor restorals. Like, different for garments. For the floor restorals. Like different undergarments and stuff like And it like was that. stuff that they were required to take with them or supposed to take with them if something were to happen, like a natural disaster or whatever. Yes, because they believe in the destructions and all of that and the right. cleansing of the earth and the lifting up and all of that stuff. So. Which was going to happen in 2002? 2000, 2002, 2012. Yes, I remember 2012. Well, the so. whole the whole world was freaking out during 2012. Yeah, <laughs> the they weren't even the only ones I know, I know. <laughs> thinking that it was going to end. But there. there were so many times where it's like, all right, this is the end. And then when nothing happened, then they would just come out. The leaders, the Warren Jeffs, would come out and say, "Well, it's because you weren't worthy enough." Yes. So then blame it on the people. Once they would again. say, "If you know, if there wasn't, if you guys aren't worthy, so mm. so no one would be saved, and Christ would have no one to come down and visit. So we have to." Like Christ was on His way, but ah. Oh, this group of 200 people, you just weren't quite there. So yeah, he didn't, that, that's so why he Warren didn't was come. in jail, too, because we weren't worthy to be among him. So God had to put him in jail. Oh, goodness. Man, because I, the people in jail were more worthy, right? right. Is that? Like, they yeah. more, were more worthy of his company than <laughs> his people were. But that's that's pretty much a wrap of, like, how it kind of happened. So Okay. Wow. Well, interesting stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, yeah. again, um, we're going to be doing a full much longer video on Joanna's full story here in the upcoming weeks so definitely stay tuned for that we wanted to kind of give you a little bit into this because when she talks about the United Order now you'll know what she's talking about (laughs) and kind of have some insight there yeah because a lot of your life was dealing with the United Order I imagine right Uh, your younger life yes about two years okay three years of it okay and that was and that was right before you left yes okay Gotcha. All right. Well, yes, we'll get more into Joanna's story, but thank you once again for being here, Joanna. Yes, thank we'll, you. You're uh, welcome. My pleasure. Thank you all for watching, and we just want to remind you again to follow Joanna on her Instagram. We'll have it in the link or a link to it below, and you can DM her if you are looking for any real estate to buy or sell a home here in Las Vegas yep. or and anywhere. We do referrals. Like, oh, do you? Oh, or anywhere. Or anywhere. So, even better. You know so, who to come to now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all. Thank you all for watching and we'll talk to y'all soon. We'll talk to you soon.